for us to evaluate the integral and then determine if the integral is convergent or divergent. We have what's called an improper integral because the upper limit of integration is infinity, which means we begin by writing the improper integral as a limit. The given improper integral is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from three to b. Let's also rewrite the integrand function as five x times e to the power of negative x squared dx. Just notice how we replace the upper limit of integration with b, and then we have the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from three to b of five x e to the power of negative x squared dx. From here, we are gonna have to perform u substitution to integrate. We will let u equal the exponent of negative x squared, and therefore du is equal to the derivative of negative x squared times dx, which gives us negative two x dx. Notice we have five x dx. Let's go ahead and just solve for x dx by dividing both sides by negative two. Simplifying, we have negative one half du equals x dx. For the next step, we'll write the integral with respect to u. So in doing this, let's go ahead and factor out the five, and then x dx is equal to negative one half du. Let's also factor out the negative one half. And then we have the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral. Now we need to be careful here. The limits of integration from three to b are x values, not u values. So for the lower limit, let's write x equals three. And for the upper limit, let's write x equals b. This is just emphasizing these are x values, not u values. And now writing the integral with respect to u, again, we factored out the five, and x dx is equal to negative one half du. We already factored out the negative one half, so now we have du, and e to the power of negative x squared is just e to the u. Well, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u, which is really e to the power of negative x squared. So we have negative five halves times the limit as b approaches infinity of the antiderivative, which is e to the power of negative x squared. And again, the limits integration with respect to x are from three to b. And now we need to determine big F of b minus big F of three, and then determine the limit. So we have negative five halves times the limit as b approaches infinity of, big F of b is e to the power of negative b squared, and we have minus big F of three, which is e to the power of negative three squared, or negative nine. Let's rewrite this using positive exponents before we determine the limit. We have negative five halves times the limit as b approaches infinity of one divided by e to the power of b squared minus one divided by e to the ninth. And now let's determine the limit. As b approaches infinity, one divided by e to the power of b squared approaches zero because the denominator is increasing without bound and the numerator stays at one. So again, one divided by e to the power of b squared approaches zero, and then one divided by e to the ninth is not affected by b, and therefore we have negative five halves times negative one divided by e to the ninth, which is equal to positive five divided by two e to the ninth. Because the limit exists and we got a real value for the improper integral, we see the integral converges. If the limit didn't exist or approached positive or negative infinity, we would say the integral diverges. But in this case, again, the integral converges. I hope you found this helpful.